so <clears throat> I started in around here because I wanted my scarf joint back here if you'll see this wood grains flat I didn't really care about it I wanted to put it where it wouldn't matter which was back in the back up here I have th this is like a biased grain go through the door all right see that now <clears throat> I'm hoping it'll work it doesn't it's a little steep up here at the bow we'll see um, I learned that I, I was getting wood that was flat grained and um, I had a likelihood to pop it so um, on these sharp turns so I ended up you know selecting this wood because it was kind of a biased grain now um, I started in the start here at this frame you can see here this nice and flush oh man your cut sucks look at that um, That'll be alright because that'll actually add a little bit of a gap for the glue to fill and will give more strength than having it pushed all the way out. You'll see, that's, you know, I'm not, that's why I'm not worried about any of these. I kind of cut them a little big for that. This one just chipped out. I don't care. Glue. Glue. It'll all be glue. So, um, I started here. I took this measurement to this measurement here to here was good put a screw in that measurement to that measurement here to here put a screw in go over to the other side repeat so I do three screws in the center here where I don't have much of a bend go to the other side then I put a screw in back over on this side right in there same thing pull measurement find the whatever one you started with that you're going off pull from there all the way across Pull from here all the way across. Got my measurement. Screwed it in. I'm good. I'm good on four, four frames, five frames. So I've got these all done. But once you get the center ones done, you need to walk these back and forth, all the way back. And I'll show you why. Because this is looking good. But look at it. If I um, see that, see how much she shakes. Look at that. So if I just went around and I did this one side and then went over and tried to set the other side, I found it gets all it gets all wacky, you know? So I try to walk it both sides, frame by frame by frame by frame by frame all the way to the point. And once I get to the point, I will squeeze them. I will check my lines, get that line there. I'll check the line and this line and I will make my cut. So this line and that line are the same distance from the cut, and that better line up. If it doesn't, then I'm I got something wrong, and I need to go back and figure out what it is. And that's why I'm dry fitting this first to see. The hardest part to me is this whole bow transition, getting it all kind of straight and the whole haul kind of straight to it. So, um, so I dry fit it. I walk it back and forth, and that's just that's just my way of doing it and um, you, you, know, you can find out what works for you. Get the uh, fairing line. You can see where this right here sticks out some. But I'm gonna try to take it down to this point. So I use this straight edge, which I turn it the other way. And I put that straight edge on there, like so, to there. And then I make a pencil mark, and you can see where he was fairing that off with that grinder to the line and that's that's 24 grit on an industrial type grinder so it, it does a good job but just a little fairing going on Day six. This will be day six. 
Um, five solid days and Friday I had Friday for me was on this thing um, like 7 in the morning to uh, 11 at night so if I were to do man hour days at this point I would go um, a good seven and a half to eight just kind of running back through my mind how much time I put into it so so say say eight days straight um, for man hours um, a lot of it was because I did I added I, I probably added five hours just for that little V nose little modified V on there which I'm gonna tell you right now just based on looking at the shape of the hull probably was not worth it I won't be able to tell till I get it in the water but I don't think that thing's gonna do shit for it so it is what it is I tried it um, if I did it again I probably wouldn't do it I would just go I would I'd have the bottom on I'd probably have glass on it now without doing that little modification so I would probably go without doing it um, today obviously I'm gonna trim this off I'm gonna I normally get to this point and I'm like hell yeah let's put the bottom on and get her going you know but um, we're not doing that so um, I'm gonna actually without the bottom on because I think it'll be right really easy I'm gonna put the drain plug holes in I'll put them in the center. I've had them here. I've had them in the center. I I, I tend to do center because um, if I put them somewhere close like this, it makes sense. You know, hey, the water's going to come down here, collect, and it's going to drain out. But then it kind of sits all the way over here in this whole area. If I put it center, then I'll if I'm outside with it, it'll just collect in a small amount of the corner instead of a large portion of the bay so because um, it's hard to find a perfectly flat place to put it where it'll drain perfect um, I'm also on this boat because of what I just mentioned about storing it out in the weather some I'm gonna end up putting I made this jig it's simple scrap wood plywood 2 by 4 used a hole saw we're gonna drop that down like so and I'm gonna drill with a hole saw that little bit of wood out of each one of these frames every one of these so I kinda have a little weep hole for any water <clears throat> to run back to the back so that I've not ever done that but I'm um, I'm gonna try it on this boat so <clears throat> I'm going to also, while I have the bottom off, I'm going to make up a epoxy and a slurry with probably a phenolic and um, just take and coat each one of these sections right here just to kind of, you know, provide some kind of seal on the end grain. So I'll, I'll fill all, all these in, all the weeps, I'll do the same. So here we are, got all those done, yep, looking good all the way around. I cut out my holes for my drain plugs, let's see if they fit. Oh my god, it's, it's huge. Now what? No, <laughs> I do that on purpose. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to clamp a block here here uh, I'll probably put wax paper on it in between you know in between the blocks and I'm gonna make up a uh, epoxy slurry with wood flour and then I'm gonna fill that solid and that way I'm gonna have a good area to come back and redrill the hole to fit the drain plug oops that I dropped and when I do seat that back in there, I will be um, seating it 
through um, the epoxy and you know that way the wood's sealed up and um, I don't have to worry about any any kind of like seepage because I always felt like when I drilled the hole just a little bit larger and then would put something on this um, some kind of like 50 I know, what is it 5200 or something and shoved it in there spinning it I always still felt like I just didn't get a great seal all the way through so I um I actually fill this solid with epoxy redrill it to the size of the just a bigger bit bigger than the tube and then I'll put it in with the um, marine adhesive boat building update day whatever five six seven this would be what the equivalent of eight I guess um, rear plywood on a uh, little overcast today possible rain so I um, am doing my butt blocks but since I did the weep holes I have to leave a gap in it oh well and um, so I just pretty much I'm using two by sixes I will not glue I will not screw through that frame I'm just pretty much you can see the glue there I put glue on it on all areas of contact put screws in it now I gotta go over there and do the same and then we'll be ready for the next piece of plywood all right an update um, got the bottom on Woo, sweetness I'm trimming everything down um, look at those cuts stellar all right maybe not I've seen snake straighter doesn't matter I'm gonna ferret down with the uh, grinding pad and on that seven inch grinder and then I'll roll it all over with a belt sander you can kind of see the lines of this thing definitely shaped up um, did the uh, bow section I'm, this that and those two pieces of plywood took me all darn day I've got my butt blocks in there all fit in perfect all that was just sort of um very time consuming I was shocked I didn't believe it would take me all day to just do this section of the bottom but it did um, the countersunk put in bronze coated not all bronze bronze coated deck screws so good uh, and then I put it all in with PL premium which you can see here pretty pretty hard pretty 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 cool stuff actually um, I use it on all my boats have been for years and um, it does a good job you can see the bow section I had to strip in with these pieces of plywood because I couldn't get it to make the transition because I was using half inch and I wasn't going to buy quarter because that's just more money and we're trying to get this puppy dog done for under 1500 bucks which makes a very very big usable boat um, you can see it does not line up here I got an edge and I got an edge because these were more flexible and arced in some so I will fare some out on both these pieces and use a epoxy wood flower slurry first I'll tape off these seams you see I left them wide and I left them wide on purpose I'll tape off the inside with duct tape on all these make up my slurry take a drywall trowel probably and kind of blend in that transition and that way it'll all hopefully be a good smooth transition the whole way um, remember we're doing this on the cheap and if I can get mother nature to stop raining on me It'll be a lot better, but I think I'll possibly be able to get to doing some glass today and uh, make it make it start looking like a real boat.
Got her all fared out, sanded. I got sawdust in my eyes, so forgive me for blinking. But uh, yeah, all right. You can see, rolled over all the edges. Sanded it all down. I didn't fare out too much on the seams. I'll just, um, I'm gonna skim those. At this point, I'm going to scribe some lines across the side of it for a spray rail, because that'll show up when I do my glass. It'll show through, and then I can just put my spray rail to that line. And then um, I flattened out this for a, for a little piece on the bow. I didn't fare this. I was going to fare it down like I normally do and take this edge off. But I decided not to thin this plywood. And really what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a good old drywall blade. And I'm going to skim right on across here and just kind of fill all this in. And then I'll glass over it. So what I'm going to do is I'll wet out this. Because this, this stuff feels thirsty. Real thirsty. So I'm going to wet it out. Epoxy saturate it. Then I'll fare it all. And then, uh, then I'll put the glass on it. Fare it meaning I'll just, I'm just going to fill in all the. I'll fill in all the gaps. The screw holes. Fill this in, fill this section here in, you know, just kind of get all these filled in with a fairing compound. Let those sit a little bit and then then I'll glass it. And um, and I like, you know, it's funny, this is, <laughs> out of all this AC, I know people bitch and moan about plywood. Unless you have marine plywood, it isn't any good. But this little section right here is the only, out of this AC plywood, the only little area I've found, and it's about a fingernail's depth for a void. So um, all the rest of it, yeah, you can walk around and see. There's just there's no voids. It's five layers. So I mean, if you're just making a work boat and it's not stitching glue, it's on frame. There's no reason not to use something like this. Okay, once I start my epoxy, I will saturate it, fill the holes lay the glass, fair out a few coats, and then stop. But I will do it all so it's wet on wet on wet on wet because I like the chemical bond of it. And, um, and then I'll sand it all down and then whatever I have to fair in afterwards can be a mechanical bond. That's just kind of the way I like to do it. Next you see it, it'll probably, uh, hopefully, have some glass on it.